calibrating for angle probes is a little bit different. The sound is traveling at an angle. In this case, this is a 60 degree angle measured from the vertical. We have a 70 degree and a 45 degree. I'll leave it on the 60. We have to measure distance at the angle of the probe. In this case, 60. We'll put it on a V V1 block. The V1 block has a radius of 100 millimeters, thus giving us multiple echoes of 100. We'll squash the range down so we get one, two, three echoes. That's over three, one, two, three, almost 400 millimeters range. We'll open up the display so we have a range of 200 millimeters. First echo in the center of the screen. Second echo on the edge of the screen. So we have an echo of 100 millimeter radius here, and the second echo represents therefore a total range of 200 millimeters from left to right. Increase the amplitude. We click the V1 button on the top to exit the calibration mode. We now have a screen reading of 0 to 200. The other method is on the V2 block which has a radius of 25 and 50. Here we will get multiple echoes of 25, 100 millimeters, 175 and 250. If we turn the probe this way facing the 50 mil radius, we have echoes of 50 millimeters, 125, 200, and 275. The most popular way is just to face it on the 25 mil radius and set it so we have two echoes, which represents 25 and 100 millimeters, giving a total range of 100 millimeters. We have the first echo here at a quarter of the screen width, 25 millimeters, and the last echo right at the end here representing 100 millimeters. The V2 calibration block pointed to the 25 mil radius gives an echo at 25 millimeters and another echo at 100 millimeters. We can turn the probe to confirm the 50 mil radius. Click the V2 to exit the calibration block mode, and we could now test the world. This route, I'm picking up the route here with this echo. The distance traveled by the sound at an angle of 60 degrees is therefore 40 millimeters on a 100 millimeter screen width range.